now let's get into this Micah talk. This is Mike Mike McCarthy talking about Micah Parsons and the camp that he's been having so far. I mean, Mike is having an, an excellent camp. Um, you know, he's uh, trying to go back through the practice. I don't think there's been a practice that he hasn't made, you know, splash play or been productive. So, you know, I think just the biggest thing is the, you know, as a defense is the connection with, with the others. And um, and he looks a lot more comfortable, you know, conceptually uh, of what we're asking him to do. And, you know, once again, being flexible to create those those targeting issues that he cha- – it's a big challenge for an offense. So <clears> – <throat> I actually saw this on the social media today, man. Shouts out to Lord Brunson. He's a Eagles <laughs> guy. You know, he he threw he threw a little shade because he's an Eagles fan, whatever. But he was like, uh, oh, that's a Justin Herbert completion on the Cowboys. Da 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 da. And Will still was like, hey man, you don't see Michael Parsons pulling on that red jersey, bro. You know, you don't see him pulling on that jersey, indicating that that would be a sack in real life. And then maybe two clicks later, Justin Herbert's getting the ball out. That's been the case the whole time. The whole time. I dare y'all find a beat writer, find any kind of reporter, find a Chargers person, find a Cowboys person, um, find a Broncos person. Right. No matter what, no, no, no matter what you see, you know, what I mean, you you always going to see, OK, well, there's an offensive play and you're going to see Micah Parsons getting a would be sack, but you just can't shut the practice down. Right. I just want to know, Will, still. What the hell would this look like in real life? I see you focus on something over there, so I'm just going to keep talking. You good. What would this look like in a real-life game application? I know Micah's whooping people at practice, bro, and I get that as practice. But nobody's just going to go and line up against practice. I mean, they're, they're not going to line up against Parsons at practice and go 20% and go 30%. Nine times out of ten, you're fighting for your life when you line up against Micah Parsons. And even when you're fighting for your life, Micah Parsons finds a way to, to just make it look easy, whether it's a guy like Tyron Smith, whether it be Terrence Steele, whether it be all the Broncos dudes that he smoked, uh, Slater or whoever the hell playing right tackle for the Chargers. Hey, right hey, don't you dare. Huh? Don't you huh? dare. That was last Damn. year, Will. That was Go, last year. I know, I know, I know. I don't, I don't even like Rashawn. I never like Rashawn Slater. I never wanted him on the team or nothing. See, I am a Michael Parsons guy. I wanted to talk Straight to you about this because nobody put this out there. Uh, you know, out in in, in the atmosphere uh, yeah. yesterday. <laughs> uh. But I saw. I just saw one rep. But I also heard he was whooping on you, boy. But I saw this one yeah. rep, bro. Go watch your film breakdown when Micah was rushing over Sean Slater last year in week two, his first time ever rushing, right, in the NFL. Slater got him, owned him, sure. Yeah. Go watch this rep or two yesterday. Boy, that's all I'm going to say. I know. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to let you know that Rashawn Slater got slayed. That's all. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> you know hey, man, guy. look. <laughs> So Michael Parsons just leads me to believe that every time he would line up against somebody, if this like just hey, if this is a drive, right? I'm not bullshitting. Yeah. And you know, we kind of got mad at somebody the other day. They was like, "Well, Vach, you hyping Deron Bland? We're not hyping Deron Bland. I'm hyping Michael Parsons." Because we'll still every drive I've ever seen Parsons on, he's at least gotten two sacks per drive. They can't stop the play. Is it they can't stop the play because it's because it's practice. Go ahead. So let me ask you this because this is how it is for me. Anytime Dak is out there, I always feel we have we're gonna have a shot, no matter what, because yeah. Dak is playing. May not win, but you're going to be in the game nine point nine times out of ten. I'm feeling the same. The field, yes. Are you, you feeling have that a way? shot okay. that your defense is going to be elite and that you can 100%. All right. And and look, that's what we're saying, right? So when we talk about all the other guys, like, like we rave about Bohan and them, we're talking about Chauncey and uh, Osa and Neville, they're raising the floor. Michael Parsons does something to the overall thing, to the greater good, right? That he at least puts you. Um, who said it yesterday? John Oni on um on on Twitter, right? He said Micah's floor, the floor is twelve sacks and sixty five pressures. <laughs> That's the floor. Fam, I don't even know if there's a ceiling, man. Is there such thing as a drop top crib? Because if Mike is out there, I think that's what we working with a drop top crib. Seriously, but anyway, I digress. I got- I got two clips from Michael Parsons, man. I'm going to play them back to back consecutively. And I'm just going to read the damn chat box reacting to it. You know what I mean? Let, let, let's just let's just listen to Michael Parsons talk for a second. I don't even want to say You don't need to set this up. Just listen. Yeah. You know, I think today we came out, really competed hard, especially made big strides from last week. I think everyone came out today. Um, it was great to have some of the guys back that might have set out last week. And, you know, I just felt like the energy was there, and that's kind of like the standard we need to play with every game this year. Sound like a leader, don't he? Sound like a dude that realized he's in charge, that realized he's the alpha, right? 
D Law said that Q shit like, hey man, I'm gonna get my sack record back from Mike. And everybody in the back was like, all right. Man. <laughs> it was like, all right, motherfucker. <laughs> hold it, Wilson, because I see you making a face. Just, just, I just hold got on to shout it. We out got, to we... Charles Reese. He said, Lions live outside. So ain't no ceiling. Hold on. Hit a button, Will. Shit, find something. Y'all hit go. Same time. Oh, no. Shit. Jeez. Damn, that's, that's fire, cuz. I like that. <laughs> Here he is, Marcus Hardison. What's the what's the fancy version of that? God damn. <laughs> a rough or uh, rough. No, and, a rough or rough. And here's the um, follow up to that. And then me and Will are going to talk about this a little bit. Oh, we did a great job knowing what they have and what we did today. I thought we dominated as a defense. And, you know, that's just setting the tempo of what is tempo and standard for what's to come this year. You know, man, when when Micah used to talk, man, it, it was like he was talking as a singular player and he was a rookie. He's supposed to talk as a singular player. Right. But now he's talking like, hey, man, you know, we got some dudes back, man. You know, we're trying to play together. We're we're trying to up the tempo. We're trying to set this tone. We're trying to set this standard, man. We're trying to X, Y, Z so that we can do this next. And, hey, man, we don't like the da da da. It's different. Will that talk is different. You know what I mean? That's the talk of a dude whose floor is 12 sacks and 65 fucking precious wheels still. I I look, I know that practice is, is is practice and we can only do so much and there's gonna be game plan stuff. There's gonna be I just don't want to go to jail that first night <laughs> because the defense looks so crazy. You know what I mean? Nah, I, I just don't want to look over on the other side. I just don't want to look over on the other side, see Tom Brady, you know, see Mike Evans or whatever, see Julio Jones and see that that offense and knowing Cowboy fans can feel whatever they want to feel about us playing good teams and Michael roll his guys out there and just Will, what if we what if we what if we beat the shit out the Tampa Bay Buccaneers via yeah, the can score? Like, Bro, like we, what happens to us? We had this conversation Sorry. a couple weeks, maybe a month ago or whatever. I was like, I know we ain't supposed to jump to week one, Vach. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm hearing Ryan Jansen's out. Oh, it might not be no Chris Godwin. Oh, then the other center get hurt. And then this person go down. I'm like, I was already confident in our defense this go around in general. But you mean to tell me he about to run out there with a compromised offensive line, compromised wide receiver core? No, no. Uh, what's the tight end that retired? Rob Gronkowski? Right. He can't yeah. run. We already got the blueprint on what you like to do against us this year. You know, it's going to be the same offense for the most part. Yeah. I mean, I ain't trying to give too far ahead, but it, it ain't going to be Will, no 37 bad? 31. No, Will, what if it's because look, last year we lost a close game. Right. What if it's bad? What if we a, a what, close, you know high I mean? score game? I don't see that happen. Yes. <laughs> this, this, right. this shit might right. look right. like 17 14, bro. This is going to be a whole different game this year, bro. Like, son, I don't even want to, I don't even want to put myself. There's this one stat I'm going to constantly bang it upside the head. Will still brought to my attention. Michael Parsons dropped back 29 yeah. times versus Tom Brady last year. That won't be the case. Um, moving on. Uh, look, written down, I have, look, track number five. Just let him talk. Just let him talk. I ain't even got a set up for this. Just let this motherfucker talk. So here we go, Chad. Let's just, I'm just about to let this motherfucker talk. Just here we go. Just. As competitive as you are, you know, obviously plays don't stop in practice when you get a oh, sack or when you make a splash play. Is that... Is that frustrating at all, or what's no? That, it's an experience. Like, it gives me another chance to hunt. That's all that is. <sighs> That's uh, I like even when uh, ch- today I was dog tired. Um, I usually just try to push through it because you know uh, it ain't always gonna be easy, and you gotta learn how to go even when you can't breathe. You know, so I just try to keep that mindset, that line mentality, to just always go, even when it don't go your way, because you're not gonna get you're not gonna get the first gazelle. Sometimes it's the third, and you gotta keep hunting. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's always the mindset. I love National Geographic. Shouts out to David Attenborough. Listen, bro. That man said, and look, I was I was dog tired. <laughs> All the shit was look. Look, Mike was like, shit, man. I, sh- I was tired, as, but, but, but we gotta keep. You know what I mean? I was tired as hell, but we gotta keep on keeping on, bro. Hey, look, I look. I, I'm not always gonna get him the first time. Will still. I'm not always going to get him the first time. D-Law may get this one. Osa may get this one. Billy D may get this one. Even if I'm tired, I got to go, bro. But we going to keep hunting. We going to keep... 
I said uh, this morning, Vaj, man, like I think we start we have to start talking about his mentality, you know, having an effect in in, in like like Ray Lewis. I know people don't like Ray and the whole off field thing, but Ray's effect sure. on that defense in, to the Ravens throughout his career in Baltimore was just as impactful as his play. I wonder mm-hmm. if Micah can start trending towards that. I know he's only in his second year, but but that's how he is, man. Somebody asked Micah Parsons, do you do you keep up with the sacks that you get at practice? In the back of my mind, well, obviously he's fucking Micah Parsons. He wanna beat DBs and foot race. He wanna beat everybody in chess. Of course he's keeping tabs on this thing, right? Micah, do you keep track of the sacks that you get in practice, sir? This is, this is, this is what Micah Parsons had to say. The group does. They usually we uh we have a point sheet. Uh, throughout the D-line room, and uh, we got teams going on right now, and the uh, loser got to take the other te- uh, team out to dinner. So um, I don't know how many sacks I got, but I know I'm leading in points, though. You know, but my team's still losing, so that does not mean a lot. So, uh, But we're just going to keep competing. I got one more day before dinner, so tomorrow I got to really come out, balls out. Like. Now, Will, I thought this sound bite was incredibly loaded. There was a lot in this soundbite. So basically what Mike is saying is I'm guessing that the D-line room is broken into teams or whatever. And even if I had to make an educated guess, there's probably team captains. Micah may be a captain. D-Law may be a captain. Yeah. They both probably be pick teams or something like that. And both of the guys are competing to who gets the most sex, right? Micah says, my team is losing. I got the most points, though. <laughs> I got, listen, Will, I got the most sex, though. That ain't even close, but my team loses, and I hate that. Yeah, Micah could chill on the idea that you know what I got the most sacks at practice. Fuck them. I got the big signing bonus, the big first year, first year, uh, you know, uh, first round pick contract. I, I mean, I could, I could pay for dinner. But Micah said, "I'm going to take this. I got one more day. I'm going to take my losing team, in which I'm winning. I got the most points out of everybody. I'm going to take my team." That's losing. And I got one more day to try to carry them dudes. His fucking shoulders are, are they got to be made of vibranium wheels still. <laughs> Facts. Small camp shit like this will definitely translate into something bigger. You know what I mean? This dude naturally saying, hey, man, I, okay, okay, this is a this is a pass rush competition. Cool. Give me, give me Ridgeway, Bo, and like this character. And, and Right, we gonna go ride. Right, right. You, you see what I'm saying? we gonna go ride. I got the most points, but we losing. But it's cool because I got another day to catch them, motherfucker. Dog, he he makes me want to run through a wall. It's a different. Just time, imagine man. what he's doing for his guys. Let me let me let me tell you why I think this is important, uh, Vach. Please, because the guy in our room, and again, I'm this is no, I'm not coming at Demarcus Lawrence, but when we talk about leadership and the, it's just different, the way yeah, to the way you lead does matter. I think we had this conversation about D-Law. Sure, was he our leader? He absolutely was. But you know how he led? He led in a way it was divisive. Hey, hot boys, mm. you got to earn this chain to be a part of this clique, right? Sure. If, and if you don't do this, this, and this, you ain't a part of this clique. You can't – I know naturally it can be clicky amongst teams, but when you're trying to galvanize the locker room, uh, I said it before, Ed Reed brought it up about leadership. It's the small little things. That, that little interview you just talked about, those small little things – you know, like you say, he probably was like, give me Ridgeway, give me Bohanna, whatever, including everybody, yeah. being able to lead where everybody's following you and you're not chasing some some fake name or prize or chain to be a part of some rando click. Ha- yeah. Have you seen Hot Boys in the locker room? I haven't heard of Pete. Okay. Ever since Mike has stepped in that locker room, where the hell you see Hot Boys right. at? The motherfuckers bought they like they they spent real real money on chains and everything and it's just gone now. (laughs) I think I think I think D Law was the leader just because like nobody else was and he had to be. But even when D Law was leader, people was was saying that Tyrone Crawford was the guy. Right. Right. They were saying Tyrone Crawford was the true leader, right? There can't be any question of who who's the guy now. It's no question. He's leading on the field and off. 